Hello. Um, yeah, I haven't done a video in ages. Sorry about that. Mix room's still not finished, so please excuse the mess. But I needed to do this video because I've seen a lot of people sharing um, music videos and live videos on YouTube and Twitter. And some of these have been heavily vocal or um, vocal pitch corrected. And a lot of them are being attributed as genuine live performances. Now, I'm not here to talk about the morality of pitch correction. That's really between the artist and the listener. Um, but I wanted to equip people with the, uh, the, the knowledge to identify whether something has been tuned, whether it's been tuned lazily, or whether it's been tuned on purpose. So, um, yeah, we talk about auto-tune, actually, that's a brand name, more broadly uh, describing lots of different hardware and software solutions to vocal pitch correction. Now, here's the disclaimer. If you enjoy pop music, or any modern production, really, and you think that your enjoyment of that music is going to be altered by knowing whether something has been heavily or lightly even uh, pitch corrected, then do not watch the rest of this video. Take the blue pill. Click on a link somewhere, wherever they are. Um, if you want to go further down the rabbit hole and learn about how to hear auto-tune, take the red pill and stay tuned. Okay, so you've stayed tuned. You're obviously interested in a vocal pitch correction or auto-tuning and how to hear that, how to hear the artifacts. Well, as I say, there's lots of different hardware and software options available that will create pitch correction specifically for vocals. We're going to be looking at the software package Melodyne, which is kind of the industry's lead player. Um, it's actually a really cool package for doing all sorts of things like uh, vocal leveling and slight time adjustments in, in different words. Um, even, even sort of drum editing, all sorts of things. But it's main primary focus really is vocal pitch correction um, and we're going to have a look at how that can be done well and how that can be done really badly um, again I'm not going to talk about the morality of it um, so but before we go onto the screen cast mode um, I just wanted to talk about the sort of the two artifacts that you're really going to be listening for. There's lots of little things, but the two main things are how a note is hit and how it is held. So the first thing, right, okay, a vocalist will never, in real life, will never come in and hit a pitch and stay exactly there because the voice is not a fretted instrument. Um, there's really no way of actually dead on tuning so it's sort of played off hearing yourself back hearing the the notes that you're singing to it's kind of a relative pitch thing people who say they've got perfect pitch mm, i don't really agree with that but yeah all vocalists will hit a note and waver a little bit pull into it maybe waver throughout the course of the note and come off it a different slightly different pitch what you find with lazy auto-tuning or effect auto-tuning is that the notes will be hit a lot faster and they, it, it will be dead on the note, the pitch will be dead on um, and it won't waver, that sort of initial ooh, kind of waver into the, into the pitch. The second thing that you want to be listening for is the the main body of the note and again same sort of thing really is how the pitch wavers within that um, auto-tune and Terry's auto-tune in its early form was very bad at, at sort of pulling people's vocals onto one note and that's how we got that kind of share sound um, becoming popular you know it, it was a new thing and obviously overdone um, but yeah I mean a normal vocalist will change the pitch within a certain boundary, a certain tolerance of the main pitch that they're aiming for. And that sounds great, it sounds natural. When you auto-tune too much, the pitch is locked. And it creates a, a specific artifact, which um, is almost like having marbles in one's mouth. It's sort of, oh, that kind of sound. And that's sort of a pulls away some of the airiness of a vocalist's performance. 
the um the first artifact that I mentioned um, is easy again to identify particularly when someone is singing uh, either a, a large uh, glissando um, so they're sort of going from one note to another you'll quite often get um, like a stepped sound um, a friend of mine described this as it sounds like going through a gearbox um, because the note is pulled to the notes that are programmed within the scale um, and locks onto one of those until the actual input note which is the real vocalist um, goes beyond a tolerance and then it locks to the next so uh, there are ways around that if you want to do tuning um, if you do it carefully um, but if you uh, if you're la a lazy auto tuner you will get that sort of um, that stepped effect uh, so those are the two main artifacts that we're going to be listening for and um, yeah you'll you'll probably hear more things that you'll be able to identify as we go through the screencast in a moment Okay, so we are now in the digital audio workstation. I have imported a uh, section of vocal from the wonderful artist Ashley Faith of Ashley Faith and the Compass Rose. And she's kindly given us her permission to use this uh, section of vocal, which uh, is from her last album. So, um, I've imported it into Melodyne, and Melodyne is representing it on screen as a series of blobs and lines. Each of the blobs represents a syllable. So let's have a listen to the unaltered uh, vocal. Um, you'll see a progress bar move from left to right, and um, you know the pitches of each syllable is interpreted by Melodyne, but at the moment they're not being altered. I know a boy... Who once worked the land, he had sweat on his brow and dirt on his hands. But we don't want the seasons, the roots or the toil. Say goodbye to the old farmer's boy. Okay, so that's the, the clean vocal, essentially. So there's a few things that Melodyne can do. And as I said, um, we're, we're looking at how a note is hit and how a note is held. Um, so each of these blobs uh, can actually... Uh, it represents the average um, pitch of each syllable. Um, the lines that accompany them represent the modulation from that pitch, the drift from that pitch. Um, so, first of all, the, the easiest thing we can do in, in one of these uh, packages is pull the pitch centre um, to uh, sit exactly on the note. Um, and that doesn't actually sound too bad, although it does rob the vocal of some of the intent of the, uh, the vocalist. Um, so let's slide the slider up, make sure we're snapped to the right scale, and click OK. So you can see all of these blobs have moved onto the center of each of the notes in the scale. So let's have a listen to this. It won't sound horrendous, but again, some of the intent of the singer will have been removed. I know a boy who once worked the land. He had sweat on his brow and dirt on his hands but we don't want the seasons the roots or the toil say goodbye to the old farmer's boy okay so um as you can see uh, there are certain points where ashley has swung into a note and when once we've moved the average position of that note we've retuned that syllable the way she swings in and out of the note is now not in tune uh, and that's one of the key things that you want to be listening for if you're listening for auto-tuned vocals. Um, we haven't really had too much of the artifacts yet because Melodyne in itself is quite an effective, quite a transparent um, tuning package compared to some of the others. So the next stage we're going to look at is pitch drift. Uh, I want you to keep a particular eye on this uh, bar 11 and how the note swings um, into, uh, into pitch on that final note. Um, so as we go in and we slide pitch drift up, that basically reduces the drift from the average, um, the average uh, note center. So there we go. So we can see that some of the some of the way she swings into the note is being removed. 
so she's going in faster and hitting the note faster also some of the some of the maintenance of that that particular note if you watch here very carefully there is less drift from the pitch center so let's have a listen to this i know a boy who once worked the land he had sweat on his brow and dirt on his hands but we don't want the seasons the roots or the toil say goodbye to the old farmer's boy okay so we're starting to uh, remove the intent of the vocalist and how they've swayed in and out of notes and that might be something that you want to do it might not uh, but these are the, the key things we need to watch out for However, as I said, Melodyne is actually fairly easy going and fairly transparent. Some other packages are a bit more aggressive and we can kind of represent that by um, removing some of the modulation. Melodyne separates drift and modulation to some extent. Um, now, let's be really extreme and take all of these modulation curves down to as close to zero as possible. Okay, so now um, you can probably guess what's going to happen. The notes are going to be hit almost instantaneously and they're going to be held almost exactly on a given frequency, a given pitch. So let's have a listen. I know a boy who once worked the land He had sweat on his brow and dirt on his hands But we don't want the seasons the roots or the toil say goodbye to the old farmer's boy. Okay, that's obviously really extreme. Um, and we can back it off a little bit and have a listen, have another listen. Um, but it does demonstrate how the individual um, artifacts that I mentioned before are, are, are obvious, particularly um, when hitting a note. And this this note, uh, uh, these two notes at the start of bar three, particularly, are hit pretty aggressively. And again, the final note on bar eleven, it doesn't waver into a crescendo. It just sort of hits exactly on the pitch and it's quite uncomfortable to listen to again the longer notes are starting to um, receive that sort of marble in the mouth sound um, so here's um, a less extreme tuning version of the track um, so when you listen to this listen out for those pitch changes those almost instantaneous pitch changes and the way the pitch is held it's a little bit more difficult to hear because i've eased off the modulation uh, restriction to some extent but you should be able to hear how some of your favorite pop artists are achieving that sound i know a boy who once worked the land he had sweat on his brow and dirt on his hands but we don't want the seasons the roots or the toil say goodbye to the old farmer's boy okay and now let's listen with it all bypassed to the original i know a boy who once worked the land he had sweat on his brow and dirt on his hands but we don't want the seasons the roots or the toil say goodbye to the old farmer's boy okay so you can make your own mind up about which you think was better but uh, i certainly know which i think is better now let's just discuss this amount of tuning i would actually say for me this is really extreme an extreme amount of tuning but in comparison to a lot of records i hear on the radio and tv and even live performances or youtube videos this is this is actually pretty light in terms of tuning so yeah, that's basically how Melodyne works, which is one of the sort of leading uh, packages for tuning vocals um, and what it does to vocals. So there's those two artifacts, how it hits the note and how it holds the note. Um, next time you're listening to a pop record, just have a listen and see if you can identify any of those artifacts.
Okay, so now you kind of know what auto-tune or pitch correction um, software and hardware is doing. And um, yeah, I hope I haven't ruined too many pieces of music for you. But, you know, knowledge is power, isn't it? Enjoy. Enjoy. 